we rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who may have an I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and, and you, you forgave the iniquity of my sin. sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto thee all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended thee, and justly deserve thy temporal and eternal punishment 
but I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray thee of thy boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of thy beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God on high. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us steadfast in your grace and truth. Protect and deliver us in times of temptation. Defend us against all enemies and grant to your church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. 
You may be seated. The first lesson appointed for this festival of the Reformation is from the 14th chapter of Revelation. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Epistle lesson is from the third chapter of Romans, and this also will be our sermon text for this day. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law. Although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By a law of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
and we rise. <laughs> Gospel according to St. John, the eighth chapter. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say we will become free? Jesus answered them, truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate, He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, and I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated as we sing hymn 578. And I'd like to, to you to notice that the men will sing, the men of the congregation will sing the verse 2 and that the women will sing verse 3, and the choir will sing verse 5, and everybody else can do the other, other ones besides those that are indicated there in your bulletin.
grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Our sermon text from Romans chapter 3 that we previously read. One of a judge's first responsibilities when somebody is brought to trial is to determine and discern whether the law applied to the person in question, the defendant, at the time he was arrested. Every law that is passed and enacted in the state of Illinois applies to you today. Everyone passed before today applies to you today so long as you live in Illinois. No exceptions. Now, whether you're ticketed or, or not or you're run in or not is another story. But so long as you're breathing, you're accountable. Sometimes our, our laws seem to favor those who can hire an army of, of powerful attorneys or have influential connections or accountants that can comb through the books and find all the right loopholes and exemptions. God's law is different. With God, it doesn't, doesn't matter who you are or where you live. God's law applies to every living person. Our text says that by God's law, every mouth may be stopped and the whole world held accountable to God. See, there's no nibbling around the edges with God's law. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who your friends are or where they are. God's law is absolute. It demands righteousness, perfect obedience, complete and unfailing compliance. I mean, human laws only apply to outward behaviors. God's law is different. It, it reaches into your hidden thoughts and your attitudes and, and those whispered words. Jesus said everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Again, he said everyone who looks with lustful intent, has already committed adultery in his heart. See, the state trooper that you pass along the side of the road doesn't, doesn't care what you think about him when you drive past, as long as you're driving responsibly. God's law judges not only the, the outward act, but the inner heart. First Samuel says, man judges the outward appearance. The Lord looks upon the heart. See, God's law, it peels through our outer actions and our hidden motives, kind of like a, a crime scene investigator that might pour over the scene looking for every single clue. That's God's law. Nothing is hidden from God's law. No part of you is inadmissible to him. No zone of privacy that you can screen off from God for yourself. You stand naked before the bar of justice. And our text says, through the law comes the knowledge of sin. God's law shows the truth. It's like the mirror that uh, shows you all the blemishes, large and small. You're a sinner. You were born that way. It's what you are. And so am I. Psalm 51 says, we were Sinful from birth, from the time our mothers conceived us. So we sinners have a problem with God. In every fiber of our being, we're conscious of our sin and the guilt that comes with it. And what we deserve because of it, to go to hell. But sinners are also born excuse makers. When we rationalize our own behavior because I can always compare myself to you and find a way to come out favorably in my own mind in the comparison. I mean, we know God's law. We just want our own little lifestyle so long as we don't hurt anyone else. But none of our lame efforts to justify ourselves can stand before God's law. We will all stand before God's judgment throne one day. What plea will you enter? Many people justify themselves and their lives 
and their actions and motivations this way. Well, I've lived a good life. You know, I've never intentionally tried to hurt someone. I'm a good person. But compared to what? Remember, God's legal standard isn't what you've made up for yourself. It's be holy as I, the Lord your God, am holy. There are a lot of of so-called good people in hell because they refused God's justifying grace in favor of justifying themselves. James 2 says if we stumble in just one point of God's law, we become guilty of it all. So there are no eternal kind of brownie points that you get for for getting close by your own calculations. But there's only God's eternal call. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. So what is this faith by which God applies to us sinners? Christ's redeeming work gives us what Jesus won at the cross. Well, true spirit-born faith never finds any comfort in any imagined self-worth of our own. Saving faith is a creation of the Holy Spirit, and it looks 100% to Jesus' death and resurrection, trusting in the God who justifies by faith apart from the works of the law. See, a dead faith or one who who trusts in themselves and not in the Savior, may have been a member even on a church register for 80 years of their life, life, having been baptized, having been confirmed. But such a misdirected faith cannot save. A false faith believes in Jesus, like I believe that Columbus discovered America. I mean, I know, but really, who cares? You don't think about it much day to day. It's not a, it's not a living hope and a comfort that you, you re- oh, thankfully. I mean, it's there, but saving faith is different than that. Saving faith is a trust that grabs hold of Christ and lives from the confidence of his strong promises. So with God's law, you are guilty, dead to rights. And with God's law, there are no misdemeanors and felonies, no major and no minor violations. God's law is crushing. Without exception, it says that sinners deserve bodily death and eternal condemnation in hell. So stop, dear Christian, stop letting your, your heavenly hope be the lame old lie I try to be a good person. I try to live a good life. Now, it may seem odd to say, but one of the great gifts of Dr. Martin Luther's Reformation of the Church, which we we date its beginning to October 31st, Tuesday of October 31st, 1517, to the date he posted the 95 Theses, one of the great gifts of his Reformation was a return to a solid scriptural understanding of God's law. To be told that you can't save yourself, there's nothing you can do, that doesn't seem like a really great thing. Not a great rediscovery there. But in Luther's day, many were being directed to marry and to find in her a more merciful intercessor between God and man. And were offered indulgences to buy off, to get the early parole from a fictional purgatory. Rather than being told to trust alone in Jesus' saving work. And the problem with people who who think that they're basically good is if that's the ladder you think you're going to use to climb into heaven is people who think they're basically good don't seem don't care very much for a savior of sinners. If in your mind your problem with with sin is a pretty small and minor thing, so also will be your love for Christ the Savior, small. 
But if you know God's truth, that in every fiber of your being, you deserve nothing but death and hell, you can realize how hopeless it is to look anywhere else but the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. See, it's by returning to the pure teaching of Scripture alone that the Reformers confess there's no money that can buy indulgence. There's no purgatorial time out before you get into heaven. There's no satisfaction, no number of Hail Marys or Our Fathers that can make things right, and no hope, no hope that in the end the good will outweigh the bad. Every mouth stands silenced when your case appears before God, the judge of the living and the and dead, living and the dead. Thankfully, that is not the end of the story. St. Paul wrote, but now a righteousness from God apart from the law, has been made known. We hold that a man is justified by faith apart from observing the law. God demands a perfect righteousness that we cannot reach, but in God's mercy, he didn't choose to stand at a distance and, and cast stones. He didn't choose to, to forgive it or overlook it or ignore it. He took it on himself. Galatians 4 says, When the fullness of time came, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. As fully God, Jesus stood above and outside the law, but he was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Blessed Virgin to step into our shoes, to do the law in our place, to live perfectly and righteously, to meet every demand in his thought, word, and act. And our text says God presented Jesus as a sacrifice of atonement, a propitiation through faith in his blood. The sinless Savior carried all of our failures, our sins to the cross, and there suffered the condemnation and the judgment and the damnation that we deserve. So there's only one plea for us sinners standing before God. It's not self-justification. It's the blood of Jesus. He suffered all that our sins deserve, and he rose from the dead to give God's divine pardon to all who believe in him. This faith in Jesus is God's gift by the Holy Spirit. It's not some quality or, or virtue in you to set you apart. It's the repentant heart that cries out, God, be merciful to me, a sinner, and trusts in that heaven-sent Savior. The great recovery of the church's heritage at the time of the Reformation, was that God gets 100% of the credit for our salvation. It's all his gifts, thanks be to God. And he gives it to us freely, not by our doing our part, but through faith in Jesus alone. He didn't save us or come to save us because because we could work it out mostly on our own and he kind of came to tweak it on the edges. He saved us completely. Our text says, we hold that a man is justified by faith. To be justified is an important word in Romans and in Holy Scripture, Romans and Galatians, especially in all of Scripture, but and also an important word in the life of the Reformation. It means that through faith in Jesus, when, when sinners stand before God's throne, he declares us innocent, declares us righteous. Jesus blotted out the ugly record of sin that stood against us with his precious blood. And through faith, the living Lamb of God pleads our case at God's right hand. You know, so not only are all of our efforts at self justification stupid and useless and unproductive 
they hold God at a distance in favor and preference for what I got going on. They hold God at a distance when he wants nothing more than to justify us, to declare us innocent in the blood of Jesus. God, the divine judge in his heart of grace, wants nothing more than to stare down from the bench at you and me, the guilty sinner, and gavel down his verdict, your sin is paid. My son has served your sentence. You are set free. That's what justification is. God declaring sinners righteous or innocent through faith in our substitute, the virgin-born Savior who stepped into our shoes and paid the price of death, who promises, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. When you come to know this gracious judge, you come to know the God of Scripture. The God who hates sin and chose to suffer its consequences for you. When you know this judge, well, then you and I will give up all of our, our excuses and our self-justifications and joyfully enter the plea, just as I am, without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. And that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. When you stand in God's court, don't stand on the sinking sand of, of pretended inner goodness. Stand on the firm ground of Christ, the Savior of sinners. Let Jesus, your saving substitute, speak for you. And he promises, if the Son sets you free, you will be free. Indeed. Amen. We rise. And now may the peace of God, which passes human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We remember in among our sick and hurting or those who are undergoing treatments and tests or therapy. For our brothers and sisters, Joyce and Anita, for Bob and Deb, for Natalie, for Dee, for Eva Jean and Justin and Tom and Eileen and Jen, Jenny and her sister, Dan and Jana Lee and Guy and Terry, for Mitch and Dean and for Ethan. We also remember Derek's sister who's, who's been having an awfully bad time. That God strengthen and keep Nicole and my brother David. We rise. Let us pray. Mighty fortress, rock of refuge, sustain your church. Deliver her from error and preserve her in the proclamation of your gospel, that it would resound to every nation, tribe, people, and language, and that all may fear and give you glory. Lord, in your mercy. Mighty fortress, rock of refuge, bless all ministers of your word. Help them rightly to preach your law so that all are held accountable to you without excuse and joyfully proclaim your saving gospel that all would know Jesus as their Savior. Lord, in your mercy. Mighty fortress, rock of refuge, look with compassion on all who are blind to the bondage of sin. Open their eyes by the words of Jesus and grant them the true freedom of sonship and a permanent place in your household. Lord, in your mercy. Mighty fortress, rock of refuge, make us truly your disciples. Keep us in your word. Free us from error. Make our homes and families peaceful. Preserve every father and encourage them in their godly task, every mother in, with joy in the appointed gift of their children, and that children be brought up in the fear and instruction of the Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Mighty fortress, rock of refuge, bless all civil authorities and especially our president. Congress and all who make, administer, and judge our laws. Protect them from the temptations that beset their offices and grant them wisdom and courage to serve with integrity. Bring peace to war-torn regions of the world and especially in Israel and the Ukraine. Preserve those who confess your name and through their witness turn unbelievers to the saving gospel of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Mighty fortress, rock of refuge, be near to all who cry to you for healing of body and soul. Grant release from every affliction according to your will. Sustain their hope in the, full, in the hope of the final healing that awaits all at the day of Christ's appearing. Be with our mothers, Jennifer and Jessica, and their little ones. Keep them safely that with their families they rejoice in your gift of life. Lord, in your mercy. Mighty fortress, rock of refuge, we give you thanks for all your servants that have departed this life in faith. We especially bless you today for the great reformers of your church who call us back to the gospel and to the righteousness we have in Christ alone. Keep us in everlasting fellowship with them and bring us at last to our heavenly home to see our Redeemer face to face. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is, 
it is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying. Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. You may be seated for a closing hymn.
few announcements before we before we head out to to the education week for our dinner and our voters meeting. So hope that you're able to to be a part of that immediately after the service this morning. Tim, do you want to have a prayer here and then just go in or Okay, we'll have a dinner dinner prayer here before we head in there. Um, uh, you see in your bulletins, just to kind of uh, highlight a few points, that the youth are still collecting socks, I guess, until today. They probably wouldn't turn them down, I suppose, if you get them. Or, or next Sunday, even. Or next Sunday. Um, assembling next Sunday. For those, you know, if that seems an odd thing, you know, that's a really hard thing for shelters to keep in stock. So um, new socks would be uh, what's desired here, not... <laughs> Not, not the old ones. Um, we are going to be, God willing, and this is still the plan, we're going to be cutting wood tomorrow around 9.15. 9.15. So come and help, and you can help us drag away limbs and what have you. And, and especially if you've got a truck, you can not only have firewood, you can have brush. <laughs> okay. Well, um, Dee, welcome home, had a successful surgery this week, and uh, we're tickled to see you here today. The, that is wrong in the bulletin just because there was a change of plans there, so Dee is, is back over at Woodridge and, and Jim there at the Knox County Nursing Home. So you can kind of make that change and, and uh, remember them always in your, in your prayers. Evangelism is going to meet next week too after church and uh, and make some cards. So especially if you got some some young ones there and a, a meal for those who are card makers. So I want to welcome my visitors today for Bob and Carol Day have are just very dear and precious to our, our our family and so tickled to have them have them join us today and and pray God's blessings upon them. Well, we'll say a prayer, and then you can go out and eat if the ladies will let you. Father in heaven, we thank you that this day you, you fed us in spirit with your word of life. And we pray that you would continue to strengthen and encourage our congregation, especially give wisdom in this meeting ahead. We also thank you for the good food that we receive to nourish our bodies and pray your blessings upon those that have prepared it for us. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father.